Hello and welcome to Little Champs Math Academy. If you have been learning math for a while, you must have heard about fractions. Fractions are one of the important part of mathematics. Fractions are smaller pieces or parts of things. If you are first learning about fractions, it is very easy and advisable to learn it through diagram or pictures. So let's start by drawing a circle. This circle represents whole. This whole could be a whole biscuit, whole pizza and if we divide this circle into four equal parts, then each of these parts represent fraction of the whole circle. Now, we will have to represent this in language of math. Yes, you guess it correct. That means using number we have to show this part of whole or fraction. Now, unlike regular numbers, in fraction, we need two numbers to show it. So we have one number above, one number below and a line separating these two. This is how the fractions are denoted in mathematics. Now let's see what are these two numbers. Remember, fractions are used to present parts of something. So the number on the bottom tells us how many parts that something is divided into. The number on the top tells us how many of these parts we have. For example, let's see fraction with this drawing. Since a circle is divided into 4 parts, the number on the bottom will be 4. And I still have all of those 4 parts, so the number on the top will be 4 as well. So I have 4 out of 4 parts, that means I still have a whole. But what if I share one part of a circle with someone? Well, the circle is still divided into 4 equal parts. So the bottom number would still be 4. But I only have 3 of them of those 4 parts left. So the top number would change into 3. So I have 3 over 4 or I can call this as 3 fourths of the circle. Makes sense, right? Let's see another example. Let's say a rectangle is divided into 9 equal parts and I give you 2 of those parts. Since the total number of rectangle will be 9, the number at the bottom would be 9 and since I share 2 parts, so number on the top would be 2. So the fraction I am sharing will be 2 over 9 or 2 nines of the rectangle. One important thing I would like to bring to your notice that for a fraction to work right, the part that you divide the whole up into have to be of equal size. We can't take unequal parts. Let's look at a few more examples. So you can really see the patterns of how fraction can represent part of objects. This rectangle is divided into 5 equal parts and 2 of them are shaded. So 2 over 5 or 2 fifth of the rectangle is shaded portion. The circle is divided into 12 equal parts and 5 of those are shaded. So 5 over 12 or 5 twelfths is shaded portion of the circle. Now see this hexagon is divided into 6 equal parts and 5 of these parts are shaded. So, 5 over 6 or 5 6 is shaded portion. Alright, so we have seen how fractions can be used to represent part of objects like circle, rectangle and other geometrical figures. But fractions can be used for more than that. They can be used well to represent anything. Like, take an example of fruits. So, if we have Total 9 fruits, 5 apples, 3 pears and 1 orange. We can say 5 ninth of the fruits are apple, 3 9 of them are pears and 1 ninth of them are oranges. Let's see another example. In a maths test, there's 20 questions on the test and you get 17 of those questions correct. That means you got 17 over 20 or 17 20th of the question right. 
all right that was the basic idea of how fractions can be represented but there is a lot more to fraction than that the line which divides a top number to bottom number is just another way of writing the division symbol so i would like to say here that fractions are kind of division only the top number is the number being divided up and we call it as numerator the bottom number is the number we are dividing by and we call that as denominator so we have learned a lot about fractions now let's see different types of fractions fractions are mainly divided into four types let's see about them in the first case If the top value of the fraction is zero, no matter what the bottom number is, for example, it is zero over three or zero over hundred, the value would always be zero for this fraction, and we call them as zero fraction. And by the way, you cannot have zero as your bottom number in your fraction because you can't divide something into zero parts. So don't ever try it. The next rule says if the value of bottom number is greater than the top number then the value for fraction will be greater than 0 but less than 1 that means it will be in this section of number line any fraction that have value in this range are called as proper fraction because we can use these value to represent smaller parts of things The different types of fractions here we are doing and I am just showing you how to locate them on number line. The third rule says if the top value and the bottom value are same the fraction is called as whole fraction. So whether you have 1 over 1, 5 over 5 or 50 over 50 the value is always just the same one. I'm going to call this fraction as whole fraction because its value represent one whole but this rule is not applicable to zero over zero as i said if denominator is zero then this cannot be a fraction the next rule says if the top number is greater than the bottom number the value of fraction will be bigger than one that means it will be somewhere in this section of the number line which goes on forever these are called improper fraction and since their value is greater than 1 they aren't really used to represent smaller parts of things all right let's review types of fractions we have learned zero fraction which is 0 over 20 zero of 50 proper fraction so the numerator is smaller than the denominator 1 over 5 2 over 7 and so on whole fraction 6 over 6 25 over 25 improper fraction 6 over 5 or 19 over 2 so on so forth and here i would like to say about improper fraction can be converted into mixed fractions too and it will become a combination of whole number plus proper fraction like if you have 3 5 over 7 then this is called a mixed fraction which is another form of improper fraction knowing that these main types are in order from smallest to largest on the number line it allows us to do very simple comparison between them easily because we know that a zero fraction is always less than a proper fraction and a proper fraction is always less than a whole fraction and a whole fraction is always less than improper fraction let's do few comparisons to get hang over it here we have 1 over 8 and 0 over 10 since 1 over 8 is a proper fraction and 0 over 10 is a zero fraction so 1 over 8 is greater than 0 over 10 now let's see 1 over 8 and 8 over 8 8 over 8 will give you a whole which will be 1 and a whole is always greater than a proper fraction let's move further and see once you have 1 and the other number you can take as 9 over 2 which will end up giving you 4.5 so and that is an improper fraction so 4.5 will be greater than 1 so improper fractions are greater than 
the other fractions like whole fraction so that was all about fractions if you have liked it please do comment in the comment sections and if you have any difficulties please do comment